Now, today we are receiving a very clear message from Jehovah God's organization through Jesus Christ and through the faithful and discreet slave that the great tribulation is imminent. Now, how should this information affect us? Well, for one thing, the anxieties of life, the things that immediately confront us on a day-to-day -day basis, that can sap our energy, it, can, it totally can distract us away from the bigger issues. And Jesus warned us against this. In fact, going back to the book of Luke chapter 17, there Jesus uses the accounts of Noah as well as Sodom and Gomorrah to prove a, to be a warning to us. There he says that the days of the Son of Man would be like Noah and Sodom. And why? Because people would be distracted with the mundane cares of life. It's these mundane cares of life that can truly dull our powers of perception. We would not be able to discern where we are in the stream of time or the danger that is confronting us. So we have to really be careful that we don't allow these things to dull our powers of discernment. Otherwise, we could find ourselves just wandering onto a railroad track and not really looking, not listening, being distracted, and before you know it, a train would overtake us. And that's exactly what is happening to people in the world today. They're distracted by these things, and they're failing to take notice that Jehovah God is coming at them at full speed to execute judgment against Satan's wicked world. However, when we sharpen our powers of discernment, we clearly see the signs. And Jesus said that, that you would. He said at Luke 17, 24, that it would be like lightning flashing from one end of the sky to the other end of the sky. But it would be only because our powers of discernment would see these things and understand them. Now, we see very clearly, we look around in the political world today, and we can see these lightning flashes all around us. Daniel's vision of, the, uh, of uh, chapter 2, the iron and the clay of the final world power, and we see how fragmented they are, how weak and ineffectual this world government is. 2 Timothy 3, 1-5, the, the attitudes of people, including those who are leaders in the world, are arrogant and blasphemous and haughty. And these are clear indications that we are very near the time of the end. In fact, these individuals, these governments, are very much like an illustration that we saw in the October 15th, 1971 issue of the Watchtower of a little ant standing on a railroad track, and here we see God's kingdom coming at them, and we obviously see what the outcome will be. They will be completely pulverized by the power and speed of Jehovah's executional forces. Hello, everybody. Good morning. It's been a while. It seems like it, doesn't it? Oh, it seems forever. Yes. How do you guys like the new high quality? <laughs> we want to thank everybody so much for all the cards, um, messages, letters, um, love and support and help with the new computer. And you all help so much. And even those who are just there to encourage you know, it helps. You know, we yeah. just appreciate your friendship. And we couldn't do this without all of you. Yes, thank you for watching our videos. Thank you for leaving your comments. Uh, yada, yada, yada. But unfortunately, the content of this video is not upbeat. It's very disturbing. Um, and it's just... Sad. It's sad. It's interesting to note how this goes unnoticed while everybody's so focused on the Leah Remini uh, show and I know everybody's expecting Kim and I to do something. We're not going to do anything on the Leah Remini. We're just not. Everybody, you know, so many have done so many, you know, videos about it that we feel, you know, it's just a tsunami. But, you know, this particular TV show basically went unnoticed. It was on Friday night, I believe. It was shown on Friday night on the Discovery Channel. And uh, the show is called Deadly Women. Yeah, and nobody talked about it before it was, you know, before it aired. Nobody was hyping it up. Nobody was, you know, 
it, it just went completely unnoticed. It kind of got lost in, you know, like I said, the tsunami. So we just wanted to, you know, do some comments about this. Now you'll notice I put the clip from the JW broadcast, uh, November morning worship. And, you know, he's saying and pushing, you know, Great Tribulation and Armageddon is imminent. Now it goes along with the clip we're going to show from this show of how, you know, even those that leave, that wake up and leave, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, they still fear that Armageddon is going to come and destroy them, that God, you know, their God Jehovah is going to destroy them. Well, when you look at this and what's really going on, it, it appeared to me that the dad was more awake than the mom because the mom was still reading the JWBS and indoctrinating herself with the fear, you know, false evidence appearing real. And still believed and it. And still believed it. And she saw no way out. Now, we talked about this, you know, months ago when this murder first happened. And, you know, there was a mixed bag of um, emotions in the XJW community about what was going on here. But now that you see it, in this episode, I hope to God it sinks into some of you people just how destructive and how evil this religion, Jehovah's Witnesses, are. And there needs to be a higher concentrated effort of killing this religion because it's killing your family. Yeah. It's killing your family. Yeah. And, you know, this just goes right along with what we've said in the past of how this organization weaponizes your family. Well, what, what they're doing is they're, they're, they're actually creating a sleeper terrorist cell. Now, call me a cons conspiracy theorist if you want. I don't give a rat's ass no more. I just don't because when I see episodes like this and then I see this bullshit from this guy talking, oh, Armageddon's imminent. Jesus Christ, they've been saying that since the Apostle Paul's day. Those of us who survive to the end will be caught away with the Lord in the end, uh, up in the air. It, it's the same rhetoric. Nothing has changed for thousands upon thousands of years. When are we going to wake up and stop indoctrinating us with this fear? False evidence appearing real. Now, in this episode, you know, it mentions that this Lauren Stewart, you know, her kids were both going to college. Yeah. You know, and that appears to be what started all of this with the elders. And we know, you know, we all know how Watchtower feels about higher education and getting involved in a career in this world. You know, they always use the illustration. Well, it's like, you know, going and buying a store that's closing, yeah. you know. Or, or, no, it, actually, what if I remember right, it was, why would you go seek uh, oh, employment, employment in a business that has a sign that says, going, going out, out of business? business. That it, was this it. is how illogical these Jehovah's Witnesses are. But unfortunately, the shunning is real and the killing is real. The bloodshed is real. It's not a phenomenon. It's real. And not only that, but in my humble opinion, I feel that Watchtower needs to share some of the blood guilt, you know, on this episode. Some bullshit. They need to. They need to be um, drawn and quartered. Drawn and quartered. They need to be found guilty for all of the bloodshed because it's their words that's killing people. Well, you know, it mentions in this episode that you know she felt that this was the only way that, you know, her family could then be resurrected into the new system, into paradise. And I know this is a fact because the witnesses for my entire life, you know, 50-something years, have believed this. In fact, when my mom called me to tell me my dad died, you know, back yeah. in 2012, she said, Kim, don't cry, don't be upset because now he has a chance to be resurrected <laughs> yeah. into paradise. And I'm like, really, Mom? Really? You know, don't be upset, don't cry. But see, this is how they feel. Yeah. So, you know, if someone has any mental issue, and let's face it, Watchtower causes mental illness in of course they do. all of their members. 
course they do. All of us. You know, just different degrees. You know, because we all have emotional baggage and we all have, you know, this. Well, here, here again, this is, this is the facade, okay? The whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one, except Jehovah's Witnesses. See, see, Satan has no hold over the Jehovah's Witnesses. Excuse me. The whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one, except for the Mormons. Uh, excuse me. The whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one, except for the Baptist. Do you guys see the common thread that's running through all of this? Yeah. Well, it's interesting because we were just watching a video the other night and it was talking about the decline of religion, you know, worldwide. And it's yeah. not just the Jehovah's Witnesses. No, it's not, guys. Yeah. In fact, you know what? I'm going to put the link down below to his video. You know, for those of you, you know, warning, some of you, you know, Christians might possibly be triggered. Oh, you're going to be triggered. Oh, yeah. You know, and think that we're on an evil path. Hey, good Lord. Yeah. Good. There's, there's that mindset. Us versus them. Yeah. Us versus them. Yeah. When, you know, well, that'll be in my upcoming angels video. Yes, he's still working them. on them. Well, yeah, <laughs> he is still working on that. But you know, I just find it interesting that you know you send a link to a video to someone that I mean, it was just like archaeology and just you know someone's opinion on like some old maps and stuff like that, and they get so triggered and upset at me and say we're on an evil path. It's like, whoa. But there again, there's there's that. But you can see. I don't see. want to give away too much of what I'm going to do in the Angels video, guys. I really don't. But you can see how, you know, even after leaving several years later, how, you know, those of us who were in cults may still have this residue, you know, well, left in our minds. Well, that's exactly what happened to this XJW yeah. because, you know, they're being shunned. But it really looked like she was taking measures to, you know, improve her self-image. She, she did some modeling. She repaired the house from Get roof to bottom. And it, it, it really looked like she had it going on. But yet, that watchtower cancer was still growing in her head. Oh, my God. Armageddon's coming. You know, the in Great the Tribulation. See, and watchtower, I don't know if they do this on purpose or if it's just, you know, they're just so stupid that, you know, they don't realize what they're doing. But this implants that fear, you know, and this is why so many have nightmares, you yeah. know, in the organization and even after you leave. Yeah, it's, it's really deplorable what this religion is doing to the human family. And this is something that Kim and I have said since day one. Since day one, in fact, you know, even even when we were in the organization, Kim and I still challenged things. We still said, wait a minute, that's not true because the scriptures say this or the scriptures say that. But yet you don't dare talk about that. Well, I'll give you a really good example. When we studied the Daniel booklet, and in that Daniel book, like the Watchtown Bible said, the Watchtown Babel Crap Society, excuse me, i got to say this right, the Watchtown Babel Crap Society said that the United States and Britain became the world power in 1790-something. And boom, we all bought into it. We, we never thought to research anything because we were... Or think out of the box. Or think because of the cognitive dissonance. Well, how do you train your perceptive powers? You have to bring in a lot of other information. You have to bring in outside information to be able to train your perceptive powers to be able to distinguish between right and wrong, good and evil, up and down, in and out, us versus them. But when you're in Watchtower, you're not allowed to do that. So when I started getting into the historical reenactments, I started merging myself into the American history. I studied the American Revolutionary War, which predated the Mountain Man era. But it was during that American uh, Revolutionary War that I caught something that made me challenge Watchtower. The fact that the British Army burnt down the White House in 1812 debunks what Watchtower said in that Daniel booklet, that Daniel book. Because in 18, uh, in 1790 something, 
the United States and Britain may have been friends, but in 1812, the British burnt down the White House. Your ally would not do that. Yeah. So when I brought you dual up, world power, yeah, you, there was no dual world power. So I mentioned that that to my mother. Oh, Michael, don't ever say they're wrong. Don't. But there's right there in front of your eyes. History shows that Watchtower pulled that nonsense straight out of their ass because they were not no dual world power. So they were wrong. What else are they wrong about? Well, hey, how many more JWs are going to kill themselves thinking that Armageddon is tomorrow? And that, it's, that God is going to kill them. Mike, if this is the God you guys want to worship, keep him away from me. Please keep that God away from me. Well, you can see. And he says, oh, you know, the signs are all there and Great Tribulation is imminent and Armageddon's imminent. And I love their illustration of the ant on the track. Oh, my God. You know, with the governments and how arrogant and haughty they are saying, halt, you know, to the train. And Jehovah's coming at them like a train. It's like, really, guys? You have been saying that for a gazillion years. Clear back to the beginning, that's what Russell was saying. Just go back and read, you know, his literature. He was saying the same thing. The Bible students were saying the same thing. They've been saying this for, you know, 140 years or no, whatever it is. The Apostle Paul wrote about it. Those of us who survive to, to the end will be will be caught away up into the heavens and, and we shall meet the Lord in the air. <clears throat> Those words have proved faulty thus far. There's, there's no evidence. Yes. My goodness. But we do hope that maybe some Jehovah's Witnesses will watch this episode. Like I said, I believe it was the Discovery Channel, um, the show Dudley Women. And I don't remember what episode it was, but it was a recent one that just aired on November 16th, 2018. And uh, after we say goodbye, stay tuned. I'm going to put the part in. Uh, it was the last part that was about, you know, the Stuart family. And, you know, we just, it's so sad to see an entire family and, you know, the kids who had a whole future ahead of them. They were going yeah. to college. Yeah. And, you Rubbed know, out. Just, you know, killed. Just killed because their mom actually believed the Watchtower crap, you know, yeah. and killed her entire family because she thought she was saving them and they would be resurrected into paradise. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, if you're a psychologist watching this, how do you deprogram this? How do you even begin to comprehend, to deprogram what this organization has done yeah, to because people? Because they go to meetings every week, they watch these programs on JW Broadcasting every month, and the same thing. You know, the title of this talk was Following Directions to Save Lives. <laughs> it is just constant indoctrination with this fear. And it has got to stop. Well, that's why we really hope that a lot of you friends will take the time and watch the video posted below. Because he makes a very good observation that your ministers... And a lot of your churches don't even believe this bullshit no more. But they're stuck. Just like the Jehovah's Witnesses. They're stuck. And yeah. they don't know how to get out. Yeah. And I will do um, a warning to those of you who still believe. Uh, the man giving this conference is an atheist. And he does kind of push the atheist beliefs a little bit. But listen to the reason. Listen to his reasoning abilities. But we hope that you, you know... We're not telling you to believe, you know, the atheists, but we're just trying to say, you know, just gather some of the points that he's talking about, the decline of religion, and it is in all of them, you know, and I did find it interesting how he does a comparison between the Japanese tea ceremony, yep. Ponzi schemes, Ponzi schemes, and religion, there, there was a fourth one, I forget yeah, what Yeah, I forget what the fourth, fourth one, one was. was, but he does the comparison. Harrison. Oh, oh debutantes. debutantes. The debutante <laughs> yeah, cotillions. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think that was all of them. But, I mean, he does a comparison, and you, you, you're thinking, no, you know, how how can you compare all of this? But he does do he that. He does. 
He, he does, does because they're them. all cult. They all use control, uh, cult control manipulation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyway, thank you everybody for watching. This and, rant. Yeah, it's been a while for a Mikey rant. Oh, darn, and you're out of M&M's. I'm out of M&M's. Please don't send any. <laughs> yep, he's had don't, to cut back on M&M's. Don't send any. <laughs> but thank you for watching. And like I said, thank you so much, friends, for everything, you know, all your help and, you know, messages and love and support. You know, the past month has been very difficult, but we finally got, I finally got the new PC built and up and running and it's been a lot of aggravations there's still a few things that aren't quite working right but at least we have our camera communicating with our Fine. camera program and the computer those three had a difficult time an issue with communication so hopefully you know thankfully I got that all worked out and we're up and running again so thank you everybody we couldn't have done it without your help we appreciate it and uh, we hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Yes. Maybe we should just say real quick what we're thankful for. I'm thankful for my freedom. There's, yeah. there's nothing greater in life than freedom. Yes. And although I do have to acknowledge that freedom is still relative. But I have my mental freedom. Freedom of mind. You know, freedom to go watch videos that, you know, some might view controversial yeah you know and to believe what we want I also have the freedom to make my own gunpowder now too <laughs> we're not going to talk about no, that no no <laughs> just pray that I don't go boom <laughs> boys and their toys but I'm thankful for everything you know I'm thankful for all of you you know because like I said we couldn't do this without you and I honestly believe that you know we couldn't do this without divine help you know I I'm still a believer and I believe that you know I couldn't deal with what I do every day on my own so I do believe you know that I have help the strength in comes from somewhere dealing with all of this yeah. and you know, that's why I'm kind of hesitant to watch that Leah Remini show because I deal with this horrible abuse stories every day. And, you know, I do want to try to help um, abuse survivors as best I can. You know, I just am not a professional and I just can't do it. But, you know, I do still want to be there, you know, for love and support and try to get them to see a professional, you know, to get professional help so that they don't end up like this, you know, Lauren Stewart. So yeah, it's sad. Yeah. It, it's sad, and it's it's an ugly reality. Yeah. Um, in the lives of Jehovah's Witnesses. But that's what I'm thankful for, and we hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know our family's getting together for a nice, quiet family Thanksgiving. So, and I am working on emails for a nail and coffin now that up and running. So, that will be soon. Soon. So, you all have a wonderful week. We love Bye. you. Bye. After uploading this, we discovered that um, it was blocked in the United States for a copyright on the clip of the show. And so, I'm going to put the link down below. And uh, I forgot to thank Barbara Anderson for sending us, you know, the link to this show. And uh, we are going to try to upload it to Vimeo, maybe our RuTube, um, in its entirety. So if so, I will put the link down below.